Hey there fellow adult collectors and nostalgia enthusiasts. David Eon here with another virtual video catalog tour and this time what we are taking a look at is the 1994 Playmates Toy Fair catalog and it is a whopper. There are I believe 140 pages in this catalog keeping in mind that in the mid 90s playmates was at the top of their game this was like the pinnacle of playmates they had a lot of licenses as you can see here and they were cranking stuff out exo squad monster force a lot of star trek before they surrendered the star trek license due to a conflict with fans um pound puppies you name it it's in here super nintendo they had a super nintendo contract Skeleton Warriors, one of my favorites. There's a lot of pieces in here that you're going to recognize, that you're going to say, hey, man, I had that, or, you know, I remember that. And there might be a few in here that you've never seen before, and that happens quite often when I do these catalog tours. So come on along with me as we flip through and move right along here. You see a lot of promotion, and this is promotion primarily for the vendor, of course, letting the vendor know, hey, this is what we got and this is what we're going to be doing coming soon this and that uh, next generation hourly weekly syndicated show just trying to promote the product a lot of pages like this before we start getting into product as you see here you know some figures that they're going to be making soon based on these characters but they don't even have prototypes yet but they want to let you know we're going to be doing this and then the figures that are coming out for the 94 line. And this was a very popular line. And what killed them, what killed Playmates and Star Trek because of Star Trek, was when they started making chase figures. If any of you remember or can look up the 1701, 1701 series of Star Trek figures. I remember these. I had a lot of these, actually. And now they're worthless. Most of these you can find in, like, the bin under the vendor table at conventions. The value just dropped out on them. But the 1701 series was a chase series. And it pissed off collectors because they couldn't complete the sets. There's only 1,701 of each of these figures in this set. There's no way I can complete this without paying some crazy aftermarket markup. And that made collectors angry. See, back then it wasn't acceptable. Back in the 90s, that was not acceptable. Now everything is Chase, and Funko is the king of that. And I had all of these figures, actually. I had every figure that I'm looking at on this page. I used to have a big collection of these. And we'll move on to the other page. My son still collects these. Uh, my son Warren, who owns Nerdtastic Plastic, if you're in the Chicago area, check him out. He doesn't own a store, but he does go to I think every convention in the Illinois area and beyond but the 1701 series they had already produced I believe 420 action figures by the time they released the 1701 series and you see how extensive it was like they have uh, they have right here Captain Scott and this is him from a one single episode of the next generation they were doing single episode figures at this point or certain outfits that someone wore in a particular show more promotion for the program or for the toy line that is but anyway they had produced about 420 Star Trek figures and then here's their talking assortment actual voices from Star Trek the next generation how cool is that they released their 1701 and everybody got upset and they felt so bad about it, the executives at Playmates. And you won't see this kind of integrity from a modern toy company either. They felt so bad about it, they surrendered the license, as I understand it. They said, okay, we're going to stop making the Star Treks because we've really upset people. And we're not trying to take advantage of everybody, we just thought it would be a neat idea. And there you go. I remember this episode too where they were dressed up like uh, I forget the name of the character Picard was portraying uh, Dixon Hill right 
Was it Dixon Hill? Let me see. Yeah, Dixon Hill. I haven't seen that in forever either. I, I've watched The Next Generation. I'm not a huge fan of the show. And, you know, most people that were fans of The Next Generation will tell you that um, the show really didn't start getting good until after the introduction of the Borg, which was the, what, final episode of Season 3? It was supposed to be a cliffhanger to Season 4. And the Borg itself is not even an original concept. Um, anyone out there fans of Doctor Who, have you ever heard of the Cybermen? What are the Cybermen? Think about it. These are Mego-like. They're 9 inches tall, though. So they're actually more Shindana-like, but that is a Mego concept in 9 inches, and that's neat. That's cool. Oh, I remember these. The uh, Ideal used to make these, didn't they? Was it Ideal or Remco? I don't remember. Somebody knows. Somebody can tell me. I can't remember everything I try where it's on a wire and it makes the ship whip around. That's cool. And then the Borg ship, which they did make a Borg ship, but, you know, this is a sketch. It's not ready in toy form when the catalog was released in 94. I have a lot of these catalogs. I haven't done a catalog tour in a while. And again, more concept, because now they're showing you pictures from the show, but saying, yeah, we're going to make this too. Ferengi Marauder, Starship, with uh, light-up features and try-me packaging. It includes technical blueprints, which Star Trek fans are big into that. I knew a guy that was huge on like technical blueprints. Used to collect entire catalogs of that stuff. There's an actual working model, and this is a glider. You throw it. <laughs> so destroy the toy. That's how this works. Starship Enterprise Glider. I don't remember this. Did they actually market this? Every once in a while, you come across uh, things in the toy catalogs that were never actually produced. And here's a transporter playset, right? It's, no, no, I'm sorry. It's the engineering playset. It's the engineering room for Geordi LaForge. Jordy LaForge from Reading Rainbow. And if you're into this stuff, you can find it really cheap now because, again, once upon a time in the 90s, some of these figures were getting good prices, especially since they did the whole thing with the serial numbers. They had serial numbers stamped on the foot and numbers under a thousand carried a premium and then numbers again under 100 and then under 10 the price could go up and up and now it doesn't seem to matter so much there's the enterprise there's the transport vehicle and i'm not sure that this is a vehicle that you can actually put a figure in or not i don't remember if this one uh could yeah it does it says it there holds a three-man crew okay so that's the shuttlecraft goddard Romulan Warbird. But yeah, if you're into this sort of thing, you can go back and find this for a pretty decent price right now. As a matter of fact, a lot of 90s properties, and there's the Klingon Attack or a Cruiser. Klingon Attack Cruiser with a hand for scale. It's probably a child's hand, so it's probably smaller than that. But you can find this stuff for a pretty good price, and most um, 90s properties are still pretty inexpensive because that generation hasn't started looking too hard for that stuff yet but they will and then the prices will go up that's the transporter and they have that visual effect right there to make it look like they're disappearing <laughs> and then the bridge playset they really don't do playsets anymore. I mean, they make playsets for the adult collector's market, but they're crazy expensive. That kind of stuff is very expensive now. Anybody collect this stuff? And we're just still looking at next generation here. They haven't even gotten to the other properties. There's your communicators. So you can pretend uh, uniforms not included. Sorry, folks. But, uh... <laughs> And most of the people that were watching, the funny thing is, most of the people that were watching Next Generation were adults. 
and there's your communicators. You know, that stuff never really worked well. There's radio control or walkie-talkies. Phaser. <laughs> Big bulky phaser. Phaser rifle. And over here you've got your tricorder a replica of the uh, communicator badge and then another phaser and I remember these I remember these in stores KB had a ton of this stuff I used to love going to KB and there is quark showing a quark figure promoting yes we will have deep space nine toys coming up there's your promo and some Deep Space Nine action figures here I don't think I really had very many Deep Space Nine figures I think most of what I had was Next Generation although I think Deep Space Nine was a better show than Next Generation and I never liked Miles O'Brien's character I just didn't I'm sorry I was never feeling his character I thought he was kind of shoehorned into the show you know how it is and a sort of a photographic promissory of figures to come we're gonna work on it we don't have sculpts yet but it will be coming and I do believe they actually made those more promotion they said they're going to make the station but again of course they only have a photograph of the station this is really bold actually on the part of playmates to not even have a, a a sculpt let alone a working prototype and to put that out there and say yeah we're doing that so go ahead and place your order that's very bold because anything could fall through all it takes is for somebody who works at Paramount to say you know what I don't approve that sculpt and they're right back to the drawing board after having made that promise there's the runabout that's the Deep Space Nine runabout and does this also fit three no this only holds two figures well I guess it'll have to do it's a Kardashian warship model it looks different in the two pictures you see that's a more realistic that's uh, pretty bright that's a lot of extra color I like how it has a stand though so that you can prop it up and then talking about the classic or original Star Trek and I had a bunch of these too I had a lot of playmates I had a lot of playmates I had that set as a matter of fact that box set and I like how they show the packaging I, I actually prefer it in these catalogs when they show you what the packaging is supposed to look like because very often they don't you rarely see pictures of the packaging especially as time wore on for example an older catalog would have packaging detailed pictures but newer stuff newer catalogs don't always bother there's your NCC 1701 Enterprise but I collected a lot of Playmates figures not just the Star Trek and you know it was part of the collection that I lost many years ago I had a rather massive collection that was stolen and a lot of things it's difficult to replace there's your classic series of phaser and if I remember correctly this part does come off I could be wrong about that but it's uh, I want to say it, it's removable and your communicator you see back when I used to collect this stuff mostly um, you could get it super cheap like the Star Wars figures that I had I was still buying them two and three for a dollar at KB toy stores try paying that for a Star Wars figure now Voyager promoting Voyager it's very heavy on Star Trek it was very popular at the time Oh, I guess they're only telling you that they will be doing Voyager. They have nothing prepared. And then we jump into Ninja Turtles, which is, I believe, the property that made 
Playmates popular in the first place. And we're all, all the way up to page 45 already. We're already up to page 45. And here we go with Ninja Turtles. And these are the Cyber Samurai Turtles. And I think uh, these are pretty popular with collectors now, aren't they? I don't collect Ninja Turtles. I've never been that big on turtles, although I did have some back in the day, but usually crossovers like the Apollo Mission Turtles I had, the Star Trek Turtles, the Universal Monster Turtles, stuff like that I collected, but not the regular Ninja Turtles. LPH is more into the classic turtle line, but she does not have any vintage carded Ninja Turtles, actually. Uh, everything that she has is modern, you know, Super 7 or modern Playmates or NECA, things like that, but she does not have any classic ones. These are interesting though, I like the way they look. And of course they have a firing feature, because why not, right? Cyber Samurai. And I remember these too, the uh, Kraken Turtle egg figures. How silly is this? It pops up out of the egg, does like a backflip or something, is that right? I remember them. Playmates was just doing anything Ninja Turtles back in the day, honestly. Um, they had, I think, even run out of ideas and just kept going. And that's where they come up with stuff like this. It's like, all right, you know what? We're not giving up that money. Kung Fu tournament figures. And, you know, again, not terribly familiar with the Playmates Ninja Turtle line. So if you see something in here that was never produced, go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. Just feel free to chime in. More Kung Fu. Kung Fu Leo and Kung Fu Ralph. I don't know if that's a traditional outfit there, Ralph. I don't think that's a traditional kung fu outfit at all. These I remember too. I actually collected these because I was into Mighty Max. I had a big collection of Mighty Max as well. Uh, and that's the playset assortment. And this is basically copying the concept of Mighty Max, which of course was a male version of Polly Pocket. And everybody was doing this. It was immensely popular at the time. And I did have these, and I did have a collection of Mighty Max. I'd like to um, rekindle my interest in the Mighty Max playsets if I can find any for a good price, carded or sealed. These two, really, I like those two. And the pizza tossing figures. This is what I mean. It's like Playmates just really getting carried away and coming up with anything they can think of to keep Playmates uh, Ninja Turtles going and continuing to sell the product. Which, you know, I understand. I mean, they want to make their money. They want to make their money. How about this one? The pizza skimming jet boat. Did anybody have this? Is this a tough piece to find now? I bet it is. They had all these weird little pieces and things like that, so loose, I bet a lot of these are hard to find. And the pizza-powered prop. I do not remember having seen this before. That looks neat, though. That looks pretty cool. And there were other action figures, I forget the name of it, that worked on the same concept. You pull a ripcord and there, they would take off with a propeller. And then the classic Star Trek, and I had these figures mint on the card. Mint, unpunched on the card, two sets of these figures stolen. And what are you going to do? You move on. Took me a while to want to start collecting again, though, after that happened to me. And here we go into the regular assortment. And I'll go ahead and close in and try to pan this. And these are probably all figures that you are familiar with. I remember I had a couple of these, but not this version. I had the Chef Boyardee mail away. I had like two or three of them sealed in the bags that I, I sent away for from Chef Boyardee, actually. 
This is the regular assortment, and I hope I'm getting everybody in there so that you can see these figures. See anybody in here you recognize? Did you have these? Any tough ones? What are the hardest ones to find on these pages? Tell me about it. And here's some more. And they got some sketches mixed in here. You notice that? Some of these are photographs and some of these are sketches. I also had the Universal Monsters. I had two sets carded, unpunched, of the Universal Monsters Series 1 and Series 2. And I had mentioned earlier, and here they are, they're down below, the Apollo astronauts. I had a set of, I think I only had one set though, the Apollo astronaut figures. And you see those are drawings. There's a Sorcerer's Apprentice looking um, splinter there. But I'd probably never be able to find those on the card again because I know the prices on some of that stuff has just gotten insane. It has really gotten up there. And that makes it hard. And here's another assortment. I know there's a couple in here that are pretty rare as you take a closer look at this and I'll try to get a better pan on this. I know there's some pretty rare ones in there because I see people, I look at other people's tour videos and they're like, hey, I finally found this one and it's so hard to find and it's so rare and you get the idea. Some of these can get to be pretty expensive, especially on the card. They're so hard to find. I didn't have any of these, of course. And then another assortment, some sports looking characters. Very cool. It's still cool though, and even though I didn't collect the regular series, I still appreciate it. The time and the effort and the energy and the love even that goes into tracking things down to complete a set, finally get a set complete. People say that the hunt is better than actually owning it. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I have completed sets, I'm very satisfied with them. And I'm glad I don't have to keep looking for any pieces that are missing. <laughs> it's like, finally, it's a relief, actually, to finish a set. To me, anyway. You may feel differently about it, and that's fine. That actually looks more like the Chef Boyardee shredder that I had. I'm pretty sure I had three. I just I sent away for a bunch because I just thought it would be cool to have. I bet it's hard to find now. And these are Ninja Action Turtles, it says. Ninja Action Turtles. And what do they do? Jump Attack Jitsu. Somersault. Oh, these are, these are like the egg ones. They do a flip. They do a... Oh, or side flip. They do a side flip instead of a back flip. Okay, I get it. And there's the other set of Universal Monster Turtles. Oh, yeah, this is Series 1, isn't it? I got it backwards. This is the first series, and the sketches they showed earlier was Series 2. And like I said, I had I had all eight of them. Yep, I won't be finding those again anytime soon, I'm sure. It's just not in the budget. Look at this. Transformers. <laughs> Mighty Mutations figure series. Construction Mutations. They're Transformers. That's what these are. That is crazy. And they're not very convincing looking bodies here. I mean, look at that. They all clunky looking. You transform and his big head is still there. Did they did they do these? Because I don't think I've, I remember seeing these on the shelves. I like how these, the heads are actually inside the little windows though. That's, that's clever. Too bad they couldn't do it with the tractor. Did they make these? Does anybody collect these? Talk, talk to me. There's a jet. That's a bit more like a transformer right there. Nice try, though. 
It's not quite Hasbro. And then a, a helicopter. Air Force Mutation, Dawn and Ralph. Interesting concept. And yeah, it's not over yet. Road Ready Mutations series. The Road Ready Mutations. Yeah, let me know if they made these. I, I don't recall seeing these on the shelves. And, you know, it it could be that they made them, and I've never seen them in a, in a convention or anywhere either because carded examples of a lot of this stuff, carded and boxed examples, it's gotten so hard to find. It really has. And then over here, Auto Mutations Figures Series, it says. Auto Mutations. I don't remember these either. What is it they're supposed to do? It says, if you blink, you'll miss it. These guys are the fastest mutant turtles in the world. Squeeze their muscular mutant legs and watch your hard-shelled heroes metamorphose it from mutants to armored ninja warriors. I guess they flip around when you squeeze their legs together. Kind of like uh, Power Rangers, the Bandai Power Rangers, when you squeeze them, or their heads flip. Something like that. And we're still going with Ninja Turtles. Goodness. More mutations. I guess we'll have to close in on this because it's kind of hard to see. Regular Turtles to Ninja Turtles. A man to a rat. More turtles. April to where April? I don't know what that is. <laughs> They're interesting. They're interesting and different. What do you think of these guys? And motorcycles. Little biker mice from Mars thing going here. Bodacious bikers. I guess uh, you pull the tab on the back and they actually move. They take off on the bikes. They were really deep in this. They're as deep in the turtles as they were into the Star Trek line. Because we're all the way up to page 70 and we're still going. Dinosaur assortment. I don't really remember these either being on shelves. Is there something here that wasn't done that you wish they had made? More dinosaurs. Everybody gets around to dinosaurs eventually. Even He-Man did it. Mattel did it with the He-Man assortment. Freaking dinosaurs. And somehow we're into farmers now. Ran out of ideas, we'll make tractors. <laughs> That's what we'll do. Tractors, sold. Incredible. And then sewer surfing ninja tubes. I guess these can actually go in the water. Sewer surfing tubes. And then to really confuse you, Savage Leo with Sewer Wildcat. Because, you know, tigers in the sewer. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> oh my god. I wish they put suggested retails on here. They don't, though. If you ever see prices in a catalog like this, they're handwritten, usually by the vendor. And Cyber Samurai turtles giant cyber samurai and it, this is obviously a sketch and it says will be 12 inches tall motorized walking action with mini mutant pilot inside interesting so like exo squad yeah we're still looking at turtles guys hot rodden ninja mobile assortment
fascinating. And then the turtle movie version, subway car, sewer subway car. I don't think it looked like that in the movie, did it? Did they take a little poetic license? It says holds four turtles. Four turtles would go would go in there. Wow, talking turtle communicators. Incredible. Makes you wonder if anything else in this catalog. But there is though, I assure you. There's other properties in here that we'll be taking a look at shortly. And Tune Cycle with Tune Ralph. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. And then the Technodrome Scout Vehicle. That's kind of neat. All right. Yep, still doing it. Ninja Grappler. Capture and Shredder. You don't want to grab him. He's got all those spikes. And then the Party Wagon. The infamous Party Wagon. And the Technodrome itself, which is a grail, I think, for a lot of collectors to have that big playset. Place, big playsets are always popular. And then the sewer playset, which connects to the Technodrome. That's neat, actually, that they can put them together. And then a couple of turtle movie figures here, just for good measure. And now Sequest. Yes, they made Sequest action figures. And I actually had a set of these. I had a set of the Sequest. Remember, uh, back in these days, I was getting them off the shelves at KB for like, God, what were these? Three for five, I think, for the Sequest, if I remember correctly. They were cheap. And I did watch the show. The show was goofy, but I did watch the show. And there's your basic figure assortment. And I remember this one being short packed. The dolphin was actually rather difficult to find. Darwin, right? Darwin the dolphin was difficult to find. And then over here, regular figure assortment. And you see them taking some liberties here because that looks completely like a repainted Dax from Deep Space Nine. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> but you know, toy companies do stuff like that. Toy companies, uh, they take all the shortcuts they can to save money. They have a ship. I don't know if they ever made that. If they ever made that model of the ship. It says 25 inches, highly detailed replica from the TV series. And then underwater one-man attack sub. Just for good measure. The Renegade Delta Force Submarine. Anybody watch Sequest or remember this series? And then a mini pickup vehicle. And we're on to Skeleton Warriors, which uh, I, I watched the cartoon and I had the entire series of figures and boxed accessories. And I think it was a very unique toy line. And of course, I no longer have that series, but you know, here we go. Your regular human assortment of figures. I thought it was an interesting toy line. And you know, there were large scale figures that came on a big blister card. I thought, they, and they did the same thing with the serial numbers on the feet. I think all Playmates figures, except for the Ninja Turtles, were doing that at the time, weren't they? No, the specialty series ones were doing it. Weren't like the Star Trek crossovers and monster crossovers putting serial numbers on the feet as well. There's your skeleton assortment. Very underrated, now vintage, technically vintage toy series. Or, or it's about to be, right? Because vintage starts from what, 20 years? Or is it 25? But yeah, they're, they should be vintage by now. They're definitely vintage. I forget if it's 20 or 25 off the top of my head. Oh, here we go. I almost skipped over. There's the Skull Cycle. 
And of course, that means there's going to be a human cycle. Rogue Steel Sky Cycle, it says. I, I, they did make these. Those are just the sketches. The horses, the steeds, Royal Steel Battle Steed and Skeleton Legion Warhorse. And then a Skeleton Legion attack craft here. I don't remember if they made that. I don't recall if I had this. Can't remember everything. But yeah, they're technically vintage now. And then Exo Squad. And I used to watch this show and I collected this series as well. And I liked the Exo Squad figures. They had great play value. Smaller figures, you know, the figures were, were a lot shorter, but you know, you had these um, five inch tall mechs that the figures fit into, and you could get a lot of play value out of them. They had real firing rockets, and I really liked these. I really liked these figures, and I had a whole set of them in the boxes because they came in a box with a flip open, like. Uh, flap and a window underneath, kind of like how NECA does some of their figures. Yeah, these had great play value for uh, a young person. And they look really interesting too. The toys look really interesting. And I wish I still had these. And maybe one day I will track some of them down. Did you have these? Did you ever watch that show? They eventually crossed over with Macross, you know, Robotech stuff, if I remember correctly, but I wasn't getting these figures at that point. Rapid Assault E frames. And then small figures assortment and they did have carded figures that were separate from the large machines and while they again biting off more than they might could have chewed by showing pictures from the cartoon and saying, yeah, go ahead and place your orders. We'll get around to making these. <laughs> that takes a lot of balls, uh, Playmates. It really does. As I recall, it's one of the few cartoon series that actually ended. It had an ending. More images from out of the cartoon command ship assortment exo carriers and then uh, Phaeton's flagship Olympus actual lights and sounds from the exo squad TV show it promotes and we're moving into monster force and we're at page 111 with the introduction of monster force as we get close to the end of the catalog and there's no pictures of the monster force they're basically just telling you yeah we got the monster force license expect figures soon but now we move on to pound puppies pound puppies assortment which they acquired from Tonka if I'm not mistaken but lovable and hug huggable pound puppies not too much to say about that. I'm sure you all know about the Pound Puppies. So, as they just show a collection of the assortments of these stuffed animals. And these have sounds. It says, squeeze me, I whimper. Squeeze me, I howl. I think most people who collect pound puppies, though, collect the 80s versions of these animals, of these stuffed animals. It says, uh, what is this? 17-inch 
Joy Pound Puppy Assortment. It's like a baby. You feed it with a bottle, huh? And then these with long ears that you can brush. How exciting. <laughs> Any Pound Puppy collectors out there? Soft assortment. You mean the other ones aren't soft? What's up with that? And Perfect Pals. You see a cat there. Of course they had Pound Purries as well as Pound Puppies. And these are nine inches. Magic Heart Helplings. I do not remember these. But you know, I wasn't into quote unquote girl toys. And I was just looking real quick to see if I could spot a size, because usually it would tell you how big these things are. I don't see it. You can kind of gauge it from looking at the little kid there, but I don't uh, I don't see a printed size for how big these are supposed to be. But I don't remember these at all. Maddie Mouse. June Raccoon. Furry Families. Which I believe uh, toys similar to this are still being produced. The little, although I don't think these are articulated. These do not look to me like they are articulated. I know that there is a series of action figures like Five Points Articulation, animal action figures that come with doll houses and stuff like that that they currently sell and they've been on the market for a long time. This is not them though. This looks like a knockoff of those furry family play sets and I guess it's like a little box I, I get it like this right here is like a teapot and you open it up and there's a house inside and that's a clock you get the idea with molds in it a shoe I don't remember these either oh we have some more some stores I wonder if the stores interconnect. The store is a cute concept. I don't like that they're not articulated. But you know. And some concept stuff of things that they may or may not have produced, because you know how that goes. Something along the lines of what you would have seen with Polly Pocket, but on a larger scale. near the end of the catalog little baby water babies doll and what does that mean you give it a bottle and it pees itself that's annoying just saying as we plow into the end of the catalog here not much in the way of girls toys but heavy on action figures weren't they and here is their Super Nintendo tie-in there's an Exo Squad video ad or video game, I should say, for the Super Nintendo. Did you ever play that? It says Deep Space Nine also. Deep Space Nine, Crossroads of Time, and Exo Squad, Cutting Edge Combat. I don't remember these games either. And that will kill it. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of our catalog. That was page 141. 141, 142. Big catalog, but again, like I had pointed out, Playmates was really on the move in the mid-90s. They produced a ton of stuff. Did you see anything in there that you liked? Did you see anything in there that you remember from 
childhood or even as maybe a young adult collector, did you have any of these toy lines? Did you see something in there that you didn't know they produced or that you wish that you had? Tell us about it in the comments section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope that you did. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. All that good stuff. Check out some of our other videos. I do a lot more on this channel than just catalog tours to stir up those nostalgic memories. That's what it's all about. So if that's it, then what more can I say? But thanks for watching. And we will see you again soon.